What the is this? This, Mr. Director, is your new desk. You're going to be more accessible than ever. There's a sign at Ramsett Park that says, do not drink the sprinkler water. So I made sun tea with it, and now I have an infection. <laughs> well, Sir? that is the epitome of office Sir? efficiency. Are, 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 Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're also going to be talking about efficiency, but we're going to be talking about it for our shops. So let's not waste any time and get my shop organized. So I've got a really unique opportunity here since my shop is freshly renovated. It's like moving into a new space. I've got most of my tools scattered on the interior of my shop as well as directly outside my shop through my garage door. And with my old shop design, I put very little thought as to where each tool should be located so that I can have an efficient workflow. So today, I'm going to start the process of organizing my shop so that we can get our tools in the right location. So the first thing that I want to do is to grab my laser distance meter and measure out the exact dimensions of my workable space. And that's easier said than done, as all my tools are somewhere in this jumbled mess and I need to find that distance meter. Well, I couldn't find my old laser distance meter, but I do have the M cube handy, so I'm going to use this to measure out this barn. So after taking all my measurements, these are my chicken scratches for the dimensions of this workable space. Now I'm going to take this and draw it to scale. So here's my high-tech digital design that I just created. Each one of these little boxes on the grid paper is the equivalent of one foot. In the front, you can see the garage door as well as the front door. In the back, you'll also see the back door that leads to the steps. You'll also see two windows on either side as well as a space for the heat pump. In the back, you'll also see my office. One other important thing that I also included with this drawing are the posts that lie in the center of the shop. So now that we have the general layout of the space figured out, it's time to start thinking about tool placement. And for this process, I'm going to use a tool that was created by this guy. That's right, Jonathan Katz Moses. You see, on his website, he's got a tool that gives you the general parameters for what space you'll need around each tool. This means it gives you the infeed, the outfeed, as well as the area around each tool that you'll need in your shop. And here's a screenshot of some of the tools that he includes. As you can see, he gives you both the infeed and outfeed for larger items like a table saw, as well as some of those smaller items like a bandsaw or a drum sander. Now I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can go check out this tool for yourself, but I will give you a fair warning, you are going to get a lot of emails from his company. I've been getting about one email a day since I signed up for this tool. So enough about that, let's get started on trying to organize this jumbled mess, and we're going to place our first tool. Now for me, the first tool that I want to place is the table saw, and that's because it's the workhorse of my shop. So I want this tool to be directly in the center of the shop. But in order to do that, let's first get a measurement of the dimensions of the saw. So if I measure out the length and the width, I get about 69 inches long by 32 inches wide. So for the purposes of this initial layout, I'm going to round that to about 3 foot deep by 6 foot wide. So now we can go back to my high-tech drawing. Since we know each one of these boxes is one foot by one foot, I know that my table saw will be three foot deep by six foot wide. So by measuring the table saw to scale, I can put it directly in the center of my shop. Now the nice thing about having a scale drawing is I can count each one of those individual boxes on the grid paper to figure out the exact placement of this table saw. So by counting each one of these boxes, I can figure out how far it needs to be from the wall and back. And in this case, it's 13 and a half feet. But I can also do this for its relative position to the other walls as well. So if I count the boxes on the left-hand side of the table saw, I know there's 11 boxes here. So this needs to be 11 feet from the side wall. So now let's take those measurements and place this table saw where it needs to go. So here's the placement of the table saw. I've measured everything out and I even confirmed it with a laser distance meter. Let's zoom out and take a look. And hopefully you can see here that table saw is directly in the center of these four pillars. Now that I have my table saw in place, it's time to put the outfeed table right behind it. Now it's been so long since I've had my shop together that you probably even forgot I have to finish that table for my wife. So now that I have the table saw in place, as well as the outfeed table, let's go back to the drawing board. So here you can see I've placed my outfeed table to scale on my drawing. 
Before we move on to placing any more tools, let's go back to that Cat's Moses tool. So one of my favorite things about this tool is you can see the suggested in-feed and out-feed as well as the space you need around each tool that you're placing. And this becomes especially important when working with tools like the table saw, the miter saw, the jointer, and the planer. And all of these tools have a suggested workspace of 16 feet. That's eight feet for the in-feed and eight feet for the out-feed. So even though my jointer has a footprint of six feet, I need to extend this by 10 feet five feet in the front and five feet in the back. And this is something that I never considered in the placement of tools in my last shop. So I was constantly fighting those posts in my shop as well as my walls. So since I have the ability to address these issues now, I wanna go back to my drawing and figure out a good placement for my planer and my jointer. And that's because these two tools are some of the first tools that I ever use in my shop once I get some new lumber. And since my lumber storage is directly outside of my shop, I wanna have these tools fairly close to this position. And in my mind, I envision the planer being in this position and the jointer being in this position. So I'm gonna do some calculations with this scale model to see if they'll fit. So I'm gonna go back to measuring the dimensions of my planer and jointer and see how they'll fit in my scale model. So this is a great example of why it's nice to have a scale model. As you can see from this red outline here, that's the footprint of the jointer. The shaded area in the front and the back is the area that I'll need for the in-feed and out-feed. As you can see here, there isn't enough room for the planer. So what I'm gonna do is make a pivot and move my out-feed table and my table saw a little bit to the left so that I can fit my planer right in here. And there really isn't a whole lot of movement here. I'm gonna move the out-feed table as well as the table saw just six inches to the left. Now that I've got my table saw and my outfeed table adjusted a bit, let's go back to our drawing. So now that you can see I have the tables moved over, I have sufficient space for that planer. You can also see I put the infeed and the outfeed markings for both the planer, the jointer, as well as the table saw. Now it's just a matter of placing the planer and the jointer into place so that we can move forward. The next tool that I want to put in place is the miter saw. And this is another tool that I use right in the beginning once I get my lumber. And this is a tool that I want as much flexibility as possible with. So I'm going to place it on a wall all by itself as I anticipate building a miter station in the near future. And kind of what I envision for the miter saw is to place it right in this area here preferably right in the center. And that's because a lot of times I use my miter saw in the milling process. By having my miter saw close to my jointer and planer, this should create a lot of milling efficiencies. So if we go back to my drawing, I've done a scale model of the miter saw, as well as the working space I'll need on either side. And this is 12 feet from the front of the shop. So I'm gonna go place my miter saw and we'll move on from there. So with my tape measure measured out to exactly 12 feet, I can grab my miter saw and put it into place. With my miter saw in place, I'm really feeling like the shop is starting to get organized. Now it's time to move on to some of those lesser used tools like the bandsaw. So if we go back to Jonathan's suggested workspace for the bandsaw, you can see it's a little smaller at eight feet, which is half the distance that we've been working with with these other tools. And the bandsaw is also a tool that I use regularly when dealing with rough lumber. So it would be nice to have it up close to the front of the shop, close to where I store my rough lumber. And if I look at my drawing again, I think I've got just the spot for it right up here in the front of my shop. I've got a 10 foot span here and I only need eight feet. So I'm gonna try to place it right here. So just like with my other tools, I'm gonna get the dimensions of my bandsaw and place it on my drawing. So if we go back to my drawing, you can see how nicely this bandsaw fits in this tiny little space. You can also see the four feet on either side fits perfectly. The only thing left to do is to place the bandsaw. And this is one of those tools that I need to get on wheels. And that's where she'll stay. So now that we have the bandsaw in place, there's really only one more major tool that I need to place, and that's the drill press. And for this tool, I wanna to take advantage of some of the outlets I placed on my post. So let's go back to the drawing and see if there's a place for this drill press. So if I look at my drawing, I'm thinking that this post may be the perfect spot for my drill press. 
So the next thing I need to do is to take the dimensions of my drill press and see if it will fit right here. So once again, this is another major tool that I wish I had on wheels, and that may be a future upgrade. So if we take a look at Jonathan's design for the drill press, you can see that the workable space is actually a circle. So let's incorporate that into our drawing. So here I have the drill press with the circular work area, and I think this will fit perfectly. And this drill press fits perfectly into place. And with the double outlets, I can not only plug in the drill press, but I can also plug in the light. So we're getting down to it. The next two items that I want to concentrate on are the router table as well as my drum sander. And these both need eight feet of workspace. So if we go back to the drawing, you can see I have a lot of workspace on this wall right here, way more than 16 feet. So I'm going to put the drum sander in the corner and the router table right about in the middle of the shop. So here you can see the placement of the router table as well as the drum sander. Now there's a little secret about the drum sander that I want to show you. Now even though the drum sander has plenty of space with four feet on either side, there's also a little bit of extra space if I open this door. Now with my shop renovation, I had all the doors open out, giving me just a little bit more room. So if we go back to the drawing, you can see where I placed the drum sander along with its working space. You can also see the router table with its working space. Now that we've placed a lot of the tools, let's talk about some of the tables that we need to put in the shop. So I have a few old tables like this one that will eventually be replaced with built-ins, but in the meantime, I need to find a spot for them in this shop. I also have this bench as well as this bench that will need a home as well. I also have my sanding station as well as another bench in front. So I'm gonna map these out on my drawing to see where they'll fit. So I've gone around the shop, placed each item, and labeled it on this drawing. The nice thing about having this scale model is even though there's nothing here or here, I know that I can't place anything where all these hash marks are. All of these areas are invisible to the eye, but if you place something into those areas, it's going to interrupt your workflow. So by having those invisible areas marked out, I was able to easily place each one of those items, including shelves, both of the benches, as well as a file cabinet and a sanding station. Now here at the very bottom, I have two holding spots for the larger benches that I want to replace. And this is that area right here. It's a complete eyesore and I want to replace it as soon as possible. But since I mapped everything out, I know that it can sit right here and it's not going to interrupt my workflow. Now one thing a lot of people have been asking about is dust collection. Now right now, I'm still working with my Jet DC-1200 and this thing is on wheels. So right now, it's not going to have a permanent home. In the future, I fully intend on having a permanent dust collection system. And this video right here is the first step on figuring out where that dust collection system should go. Not only do I need to figure out where that dust collection system goes, but I also need to figure out if I like the positioning of where all these tools are. By playing around with the positioning of these tools, I'll have a better idea in the future of where these tools will permanently live and therefore get their dust collection shoots. The last thing I'm gonna put in the shop is Layla's bed. Layla, come on. Good girl. Well, thanks for joining me today on this initial video of trying to determine my shop layout. This was a lot of fun for me and I know I have a lot of work ahead of me. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.